I left South Africa in 1990, and I left, well, partly the evasion of uh, conscription, but also on a, on a deeper level, I guess I left because I just didn't see any hope. I'd voted in the uh, most recent election, I think it was 1989, uh, F.W. de Klerk had been elected, I remembered him sending troops onto our campus. It seemed like a pretty bleak time, uh, power was entrenched, um, the sort of conservative values were a, a, a seemingly immutable status quo, and I just felt I needed to be somewhere else, anywhere else but South Africa. Of course, ironically, no sooner had I decided to leave and bought my ticket than Nelson Mandela was released and everything changed. And, and this brings me on to sort of something at the heart of what I want to talk about today. Uh, this idea that, you know, can we actually change the world? And I'd like to suggest, well, yes, we can. And I know that certainly for me, uh, as a young man growing up, people would sort of cluck at you if you expressed these kind of idealistic ideas and, you know, the younger generation always think you can change the world but there's nothing new under the sun and nothing ever changes. Um, and I think it's fair to say that I don't think that's... I, it's not true, you know, as the South Africa uh, scenario illustrates. But in a way, even if it were true, it isn't true. Consider the following. Imagine you do something that is very much not what you wanted to do, but simply following the herd, doing what absolutely everyone else is doing. Now, some would argue, well, you're obviously not changing the world, but I think, and I would contend, you are. Because what you are doing by your action is you are adding a little bit more weight to the furrow that has been ploughed the path that has been that has been beaten in by the herd you make the path a little bit deeper uh, you give it credibility so even by doing absolutely nothing rather like someone who says I, well I don't have a philosophy well that's your philosophy um, so by doing what you by by doing what everyone else is doing by going along with the crowd in a way what you're doing is um, through your action strengthening that status quo and by making it stronger uh, you are, are changing its position within the world and hence you are changing the world. But that's a bit of a, 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 a negative starting point. I think, um, of course, on the other side there's the Steve Jobs idea of we're here to make our little dent in the universe and and let's just stop for a moment and think that that's what we're going to do. Anything that we, any action that we take, anything that we do, however small it might seem, uh, in in its in its modesty, sort of lends a counterweight to that status quo, and rather like the myriad of small actions that people might have uh, undertaken in South Africa that seemed to be futile but led to what turned out to be a, a, an enormous um, political and social change. All these little actions make a difference. They all count in a small way. So, where does that leave us? Well, I believe at the moment that the, the status quo that we're fighting against is a is it entrenched, as entrenched as, as any of the monolithic political systems might have been? This, uh, and it's this, this uh, powerful media that dominates our life, uh, our action and our thought. And it really is powerful and it really dis does impact us on, I suppose, uh, a daily basis. Now, how can we change that? Well, I can't take on uh, Google. 
uh, or, or I can't take on uh, the world of cat videos, to be using a more ridiculous example. I can't change uh, people's uh, um, dependency on, uh, on positive feedback from a virtual community. And I can't change um, people's deep-rooted fears that they alleviate through, through this um, uh, disengaged but all-pervasive um, media, uh, social, and virtual world. What I can do is, obviously, I can live my life differently. And I think that's step one uh, for all of us. Um, I've been talking about identifying, learning, following your dreams and becoming, uh, in a sense, the underlying you. And I think this is, um, a, and it's an uh, obvious, overwhelmingly uh, clear point for me. This is, in a sense, our mission, in one of our our key missions in life, to find out who we are and to be that person in a coherent, consistent uh, and committed way. So, last week I was talking about uh, an audacious proposal. And my proposal is this, that what we need to do, what I'm calling on you to do, and me, is first of all, obviously, to become that person, the person we were meant to be. And then share this idea with one person. Convince, um, maybe indirectly, because I sometimes wonder if, if some sort of evangelical onslaught will be the thing to do it. But share this journey that you're undertaking with someone else... Um, who will probably present themselves in, a, in an almost uh, fortuitous, serendipitous manner, share this journey with them, uh, work with them, gather another to the fold, and do it in a way that convinces them to do the same. In a way, what I'm talking about is a, is a sort of extension of the pay-it-forward principle. Um, I'm always a little wary about talking about pay it forward because there was that, that um, interesting, perhaps 80s movie with Kevin Spacey and Haley, uh, uh, Haley Joel Osment. And of course, as I've mentioned before in, in various spots, we don't really know what to talk, do with Mr. Spacey. You know, let's not talk about Kevin. Not since he, he started to come under the magnifying glass of. Um, and I'm not going to say of political correctness, but the magnifying glass of common decency. And it seems that Kevin, uh, whilst making a number of really interesting movies, was a naughty boy. So let's forget that, Kevin, and let's just focus on the movie. And, and if you're not familiar with the movie, the basic premise, this uh, sociology teacher challenges his class to come up with an idea that will change the world. And the young Haley Joel Osment comes forward with this idea that, that he will... Um, help someone unconditionally, three people, uh, and encourage them to do the same. And he quickly, sitting in his room at night as he thinks about this, realises that he has um, the makings of a, of a geometric progression. And, of course, if you do the sums, if uh, I put forward this idea and you follow it up, and each year we each continue to do the same and convince yet more people to follow with this idea, um, I, would, I would win over my village, Par Paripuera, in, in a decade. Um, we would win over the entire planet, you know, all seven billion plus of, of seething humanity in less than four decades. Um, now, that calculation is... Ridiculous, and that's not the point. You know, I'm not suggesting that we're going to start a social movement that um, uh, becomes more entrenched 
uh, in the fabric of society than than Christianity, uh, Islamic thought, um, and the cult of science put together. You know, no, this is not what I'm suggesting. But what I am suggesting is that if we start to live um, purposeful lives, pursuing our uh, our deeper, more meaningful dreams, and we share this with people, and we, in our sharing, encourage them to do the same and share their journey, uh, I do believe that two rather wonderful things will happen. The first is that everyone who joins on the, this movement um, of positive and thoughtful self-development, uh, and I use the word advisedly, um, everybody, will, we will all be better off. We'll be happier, um, we'll be more in tune with people around us and the world around us, and I think we will be beacons of, of inspiration. So what I'm proposing is that our first stage is that we embark on this journey and, and there's a few people in my um, I suppose my closest and most intimate circles that, that are doing this um, you know within my family uh, and my closest friends here there are a few people who I think are following that path there's a lot of people who have really wonderful ideas and they pull back they're blinded by the by the brilliance of their idea, um, and they they will elaborate on it. They will convince me of the strength of their idea, but in the end, they will be uh, their actions will be moderated by fear and conformity. So what I am what I am proposing is that we need to. To be, uh, we need to be examples. I've, I've managed to get 12 and a half minutes into this uh, chat without saying we need to be the change we want to see in the world. Because, um, well, that's a little overused. But we need, to, to be the ch we need to be the change we want to see in ourselves. And we need to share that generously with other people. We need to avoid lecturing other people as to why they should do the same. But we need to cunningly support them in that journey and support them in a way that will lead them to do the same uh, sooner rather than later. So perhaps an audacious proposal uh, was overstating the case. But I'm reminded of um, that wonderful TED talk, uh, Derek Sivers' How to Start a Movement, um, where he points out, he, he describes the process of, of starting a, a social movement in terms of someone dancing wildly at a, at a festival, a music festival. And that one person dancing ecstatically is a low nut. The moment a second and a third person join him, uh, it's a movement. And I guess that's really what I'm talking about. Um, and there will be more to follow on from this, but for the time being, I'd really love to hear what you have to have to say, what your thoughts are, um, and I look forward to hearing from you. And until next week, uh, ciao.